zoom in just a little bit more closer and check my focus. It looks pretty good. Okay, and should I hit record? Yeah, I'll hit record. So, and do you want a little more water or you're okay? No. Okay. So, do you know anything about the I have heard about the bribe. I've met Steve Pierce. I haven't directly confronted him with the story. But I wouldn't put it past Phil at all. Uh, he had that kind of lack of morality, if you will. Anything in the service of propagating a lie about flying saucers he would do. I mean, I know what he wrote about me. I know what he wrote about J. Allen Hynek and McDonald. Uh, so I, I can't put anything past him. He, um, this, this case was unique in some ways. Many of the cases he went after didn't get a lot of outside publicity, or sort of inside publicity. Uh, but the Walton case, because of the five-day uh, kidnapping, if you will, and the back and forth among some of the people and stuff, the polygraph examinations, the chainsaw business, uh, the whole business, got worldwide publicity, no question about it. So you, you go for the juggler and the best case kind of thing, you know. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if Phil would do that. I've seen enough of his stuff to say he was not a moral person. Telling the truth was not uppermost in his concerns. That's the way he was. And I say that, I, I've met with him. We've even had some meals together where we agreed not to talk about UFOs, frankly, but uh, most of the time. But uh, that's why I bring up this notion of he may have been working for the government. A, there were lots of other people who were working for the government, journalists. And B, it would be his style. He used to, he complained in one of these conferences, you're implying that umpteen presidents have lied to the American public, how unpatriotic. Of course, presidents have lied. And I don't blame them in some cases. That's the way national security works. And I don't feel I'm part of a conspiracy because I didn't talk about classified matters uh, just off the top of my head. That's a violation of the law, but I respect national security. So on occasions, you have to lie. Uh, disinformation was a very important thing in winning World War II. It was aimed at Hitler and <laughs> Japan, but we lied intentionally, often, powerfully. Uh, that's, that's the way the ball game is played. And so uh, Phil was a master liar. He was a fast typist. He was a great, uh, he was a good journalist. I mean, you know, fast, lots, covered a lot of ground. Uh, but there's no question that he had no qualms about playing the wrong side of the track, so to speak. Anything to get things to come out the way he wanted them. And so uh, that's a despicable characteristic. And there are many other stories, and if we get a book done, we'll talk about a lot more of those. But uh, anybody who thinks that uh, a journalist would never lie is wrong. Just to, to wrap up, and I'm going to let you then go have lunch and we'll, you know, we'll call it a day. Do you want to give us a, even a sound bite for the close about why it's important we pay attention to this phenomenon and, and what's the importance for, for humanity moving forward and for the next generation to, to know what they saw, to trust their instincts, not to be led down the wrong road by, by media or whatever. So sp speak to the youth, speak to the next generation. Okay. We're at a special time in man's history. We used to be able to say, there's only one solar system, only one planet in that solar system that has intelligent life. Obviously, we're at the top of the heap, the greatest thing in God's creation. Uh, now we begin to realize uh, several things. One, judging by the Kepler results to date, there's probably over a billion planets in the galaxy, our galaxy, and there's billions of galaxies. So suddenly our importance I I isn't there. Uh, secondly, one of the great questions for all time, for all religions, and there's a whole new book out about a religious approach to extraterrestrial intelligence. It doesn't talk about UFOs, but how the question of whether our God is their God, uh, questions like that are important. And there are certain fundamentalist groups who insist that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, and that the world was created in 4004 BC, a Thursday afternoon, I think, in October. Uh, and I reject that entirely as a scientist. 
the question also is why are they coming here? Do they recognize us as a threat to the neighborhood? I think from their viewpoint, we're a primitive society whose major activity is tribal warfare. If more of us begin to recognize that, look how we look to somebody else. You know, it's shocking. We will spend a trillion dollars this year on things military. Thousands of children die every single day of preventable disease or starvation. It's important that we recognize we're not making good decisions for the benefit of the planet. Don't we all have an obligation to our children and grandchildren? I've got a great grandchild. I think it's important that we start learning to live as earthlings instead of Americans, Canadians, Greeks, Peruvians, uh, all these other uh, nationalistic titles that we have. The easiest way to recognize that we all on this planet have something in common is to see us as others must see us. And so I think it's extraordinarily important that we recognize, A, that there's an enormous amount of evidence indicating the planet is being visited, equally large amount of evidence that there's a cover-up going on. I didn't say conspiracy. When I kept secrets uh, having a security clearance, I wasn't conspiring with anybody. I was following the law. But somebody has to say, look how we look to others. Simple fact, we have exploded 2,000 nuclear weapons on this planet. Only two on people. Well, I'm glad, only two. But how do we look to somebody else? And furthermore, it's not just a trivial pursuit question. We learned about nuclear fusion, the major source of energy in the entire universe, in 1938. We didn't do anything about it until 1952 when we exploded our first H-bomb. A big bomb in 1942, 10 tons of dynamite, lots of energy, make a mess. The first H-bomb released the energy of 10 million tons of dynamite. And that means we could use nuclear fusion to go to the stars. And if I were an alien, I'd be very concerned about the idiots on this planet taking their brand of friendship, obviously hostility. We killed 50 million of our own kind in World War II, 50 million. We destroyed 1,700 cities. Would anybody say we're nice guys? You know, that's absurd. But now that we're in a position to go out there, we need to realize that we've got to grow up. We need a better world for my great-grandson and your great-grandson, everybody's great-grandsons. So it's extraordinarily important to look at the best evidence for flying saucers. I'm not saying everybody who claims to have had a sighting has seen an alien, no. Not all isotopes are fashionable either. But the basketball coach has the right attitude. He says, yeah, I know there are many more short guys than big guys. You got one seven-footer, seven-footer, I'll take him. I don't care about the little guys. Give me the one big guy. Yes, there are sightings that clearly indicate that the planet's being visited, and we're dealing with a large-scale cosmic water gate. It's time for us to grow up. Good. Well, I'm delighted. I have lots of great material there. And I have hope.